Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, Tarkus, right now on States and Kingdoms. Welcome back to States and Kingdoms. Today we're talking about Emerson, Lake, and Palmer's album from 1971, Tarkus. We recently did Works Volume 1. So we're moving through all of our Emerson, Lake, and Palmer albums. Backwards. This is one of my favorite albums of theirs. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's it's one of the best sophomore releases by a band, I think. Uh, it's one of my favorite, it has one of my favorite longer songs. Metallica's one. That's so funny. I actually thought of Injustice for All. You stink, mister. <laughs> what, Sister Ray, the musical box? Oh. I think there was a Lawrence Welk song in there somewhere. <laughs> But anyway, the, the, uh, the, no, but I mean, it's one of my favorite longer songs just it is. immediately grabs you on this right. album. It's, right. you know. So the whole first side is mm -hmm. Tarkus. Right. The sweet. And then the second side, you've got more individual type songs. So but I'm... so just talking about Tarkus itself. Yeah. It's, it's just a, I think it's just brilliant. Um, all of the movements just transition each into each other so seamlessly mm -hmm. and perfectly. And, you know, you basically go instrumental singing, instrumental mm -hmm. singing. And yeah, each, each movement has its own style, but yet the whole thing just, just feels so complete and so, so in sync. Their debut album is awesome. Mm -hmm. Love that album. Yeah, me too. And this is a leap forward from that, really. You know, this song still kind of would catch you by surprise. If, you know, and, and really, it did for me because I heard this after the debut. Yeah, me too. This album sounds phenomenal. It really does. It, it is, really, it, it is, should be listened to loud. Yeah, it is pummeling. It, it is like assaulting. Yeah, it's It's so really, the, in your face. The rhythm that this opens with is just it, it just bounces you around and it's it's awesome it shows off their virtuosity this is, this is the thing with them it's like a palmer yes it shows off their virtuosity but it's simply awesome music yeah like this isn't this isn't again it's not really cerebral you know you can think about the the overall story or you know Leon the, armadillo the, you know <laughs> you can think about whatever the, you want the multicolor tank armadillo but the music itself is just powerful the whole thing, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, and it, it is a really interesting um, song about war, war, which is what it is, basically. And it doesn't, it doesn't drive the point home too strongly, really. There, there are, it, it's, you know, there's sort there's of no like, like gunshot sound effects. No, no. <laughs> oh, there's, there's definitely would, like, uh, it's reminiscent. There's like implications of, yeah, like, of uh, like, like battle advancing marches and, and yeah, yeah. Also, there's a, a funereal quality uh -huh. to, to some of it, a hymnal quality to some yeah. of it, you know. Which even... shows up often in Emerson, Lincoln, Palmer, yeah. anyway. This goes for a little bit more of an abstract approach, and I, I really, I like that. Uh -huh. Me too. Greg Lake sounds amazing. The section he wrote is wonderful, Battlefield. Yeah, I love that part. I yeah. love it. I think it's beautiful. And, um, and even interesting, just, you know, all of it being written by Emerson, and then just that part being written by Lake, and yet it all... It just feels like such a complete yeah. unified piece. And the drums are central. Yeah, they're in it's 10 just, one it's million. Just, I mean, times. honestly, all together, it's like equal parts, the three of them. Like, they're all such a huge part of this song. I mean, it's yeah. driving it forward. They put the super, super group. Every time I listen to it, I feel like I get a little bit deeper into it. And yeah, it never gets old. I just love it. I love it so much. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a cyclical feeling, you know, just like, I don't know, it's so cool. Which which actually, conceptually, if you want to be, if you want to go there, makes sense. Let's go there. Let's not go there. Okay. We used to talk about Emma's Like Palmer, like the worst album covers. Which is yeah. actually, I, I really don't, I don't quite feel that way anymore. Um, You've warmed up to a couple well, of them. Well, like, compared to Yes and Genesis and even like Pink Floyd or Led Zeppelin, or, I mean, their album covers aren't as good. Yeah. But this one, this one that. is so out there. It's so cool that I can't, I can't help it. I just yeah. think it's, I think it's awesome. It looks like something I would have done. 
Side two. Side two opens with Jeremy Bender. I'm, I mean, side two is less esteemed than side one. And, you know, like, uh, like Emma Psycho Palmer <sighs> does often enough, they will put a song of less profundity oh, yeah. after a song of, like, of more profundity. Right. <laughs> uh, and of sometimes, profundity. sometimes I know some people just plain don't like that. What's wrong with balance? What's wrong with a little bit of, I'm a little sure. bit of this and a little bit of that? You know, I know we're not terribly picky. That's true. Um, I, I, I mean, that's, I that's, what that's saying it, you know, very nicely. <laughs> but, you know, the, the... We're pushovers. To me, I don't know why. Bitches yeah. Crystal, uh, The Only Way, Infinite Space, and A Time and a Place all seem connected. Because they are. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, so Jeremy yeah. Bender and, 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 I, and, you know, Jeremy Bender and then Are You Ready, Eddie, are... Like, they're like... Well, Jeremy Bender is like a palate cleanser. Yes. So it's like, all right, rest here for a second. And although the music is still lovely, and I, I really do love all the piano on it. With, you know, a totally different style. Um, almost like a, and I'm not sure if this is, a, is really, but almost like a, a barrel house piano sound. Yeah, it's like a little bit like, okay, and that is a, a of bit course, of a break. I mean, and that then, is a point of, you know, where you could criticize them. If, if you just started with Bitches Crystal and... Instead of putting Jeremy Bender in there, if it seems like those songs are connected, if those songs follow some kind of, you know, why why put Jeremy Bender in there? Why not? <laughs> well, I said you weren't picky. <laughs> I said we, but now I'm just saying you. Um, you meant the, me. The, uh, no, I meant we, but now I just mean you. <laughs> the um, no, but it's no, it's a definite point. No, the music is great. I think the music's great. The lyrics are, you know, yeah, it's a little light, lighthearted, a little lighter fare. Um, but that never bothers me. Unless I think it's you a read great that, song. That one thing that that I read on online. Oh, that that giant long bit of writing about. Then it's the story. it's not lighter fare. It's not lighter fare. It's actually quite quite deep. Was it you know side two, even opening with Jeremy Bender, doesn't seem so far away from side one, and even somewhat echoing maybe some sentiments that could be part of. Tarkus. Yeah. Part of its story, part of its message. You know, I could go into more depth about that, but I don't want to. And, you know, the... the <laughs> so um, no, really, though, I, I, you know, Bitches Crystal, I mean, just the music is is not so dissimilar. It's a, a you know, it's a pretty high-energy song. It is with super, super high-energy. A lot of, a lot of dynamic playing on yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's aggressive, and it kind of just comes at you and um it doesn't really let up there's like one one little moment of like rest mm. and then it's like starts right up again yeah and, um yeah really exciting it's, yeah i think it's great aside to also yeah. to me it really does function as as a little bit of a showcase for keith emerson but i'm not sure what isn't yeah because every song it, it seems like he's kind of doing something different so, I mean, you know, and, and then on uh, The Only Way, it starts, you know, very churchy, very... Yeah, know, the organ. Uh, hymn, mm -hmm. very Bach-ish. Yeah. Or just Bach. It's a very solemn, uh, you know. solemn tone. And it's an interesting song. Lyrically, of course, the it's... It's a bit of a downer. Well, you could look at it that way. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It depends on how you look at things, <laughs> I suppose. A Time and a Place is a fairly aggressive song. You know, and I, I mean, I just, I love his singing on this. I was going to say, say yeah. Yeah. Greg Lake just sounds he could, he in could such great form. Belt and it out. Yeah. All of these songs. And like you were just saying that, you know, it's like a showcase. They're all showcases for Emerson. But all three of them yeah. are just like in such perfect balance and doing their thing and just being so awesome at what they do. And yeah, Greg Lake just sounds so good on every song. He sounds so great. And yeah, on this one, really, there's a lot of power in his voice, but... Um, it's just easy to listen to him. Their penchant for putting songs like Jeremy Bender, you know, Are You Ready, Eddie, on albums. I know it is a bone of contention. You know, it. it I'm I'm really kind of uh, betwixt and between about that. I sometimes, I mean, on the whole, I don't think it detracts from the album. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of a feature of Emerson, Lake and Palmer. It's sort of, it's something that they do. they do. Yeah, yeah. it's like a hallmark. So it's, it's, 
So I accept you just it. Take it. No, I accept it. And you take it and be glad. The individual songs, like Jeremy Bender, I I enjoy just fine. Um, are you ready? So I was gonna say, I'm sorry. I was gonna say, but actually, are you ready, Eddie? I actually kind of like because it's them like breaking the fourth wall. I mean, after doing this this uh, this album and and some very complex yeah. arrangements. Right. I'm sure the recording. You know, was just lots this of fun. just this short rock and roll song yeah not, let off some steam you know not to be taken seriously in any way you know it doesn't that doesn't bother me i think that that's actually kind of funny yeah no well i was gonna say that um i don't really yeah for for the reasons you just said i don't really put jeremy bender in the song in the same category hmm. although the tone of like the lyrics for jeremy bender don't match maybe the lyrics of all the other songs um I st- yeah i still feel like are you ready, Eddie? Is like yeah. in a in a different place. I I enjoy and the, I like it. Yeah, I enjoy the whole album, really do. Um, it's it's phenomenal. It's it's an incredible achievement for them. Um, one of the great, you know, early seventies records. No matter what genre you're talking about or whatever. Yeah. And um, Tarkus, Tarkus is mind blowing. Yeah. You know, I I it really is just. Fast, yeah, powerful, it's kind rhythmic. Of it's amazing, and uh, and and really, it it kind of goes along with you know what we keep saying about you know how powerful all this music is, and and you know you can sort of overthink it, you know, crank it up. It sounds it sounds awesome. Yeah, just use your ears. Oh. And your heart. Aww. Thank you so much for watching our discussion of Tarkus. Please make sure to let us know what you think of this album in the comments. And please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos here at Stays and Kingdoms every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And we will see you next time.